thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, and um, this is one of the most important webinars uh, that talk about a very specific um, time of our lives, and uh, it's impacted everyone, um, no matter where they live. Uh, but I do have um, huge trust in humanity and science that we will overcome this. Uh, so today we will be talking specifically about four ways uh, to, grow, to grow your business during COVID-19. Uh, before we start, very quick brief on Green Lotus. Uh, we, sh we started in 2012, and we are trusted by more than 1,000 uh, small and medium and large companies around the world. We have more than 30 services, and they're all digital. And here are some of our favorite clients. The most common thing about all of our clients is that they wake up every morning and say, how many leads did we get today? How much more business we get today? So uh, we're very involved in um, this area. And um, some of the things that we're so proud of um, and the uh, awards that we've won, we won the best digital agency uh, in Canada in 2020. I won the second entrepreneur of the year. Uh, also as well, we ranked the number one SEO agency in Canada and third globally. And my first entrepreneur of the year was in 2015. And our SEO tools is ranked the number one SEO tools for uh, marketing for startups. Um, this is a very quick brief, but let's just jump right in. Um, so this is how COVID actually impacted uh, businesses and the way we do life uh, in Canada. And I have also another slide in the U.S. Uh, and I just want to share how um, North America are very similar in the way we react uh, that will kind of serve both um, listeners from Canada and listeners from the U.S. So you can see that how people have shifted back on doing in-person um, all the way from uh, retail, from furniture, from general, uh, from who, uh, food and beverages. And you can see the online portion has been growing and growing um, all across the board. The U.S. Um, is actually broken by uh, age. So the people under 35, you can see the before and after and how much is the um, people are doing shopping online. So the people who used to do shopping once a week have increased by like 30% twice a month or never or almost uh, never or almost never. And you can see the shift goes down as we um, go to older generations. But it is uh, one of the most important things that we um, focus on is that um, the way that COVID impacted the world have shifted the way consumers think and act and buy and do the research. The most important thing we need to understand about this is how is it important different generations? So 96% of millennials and Generation Z are concerned about the pandemic and its effect on economy. So the smarter, the younger, smarter generations are very aware. And the behavior changes of millennial and Generation Z are more dramatic than other generations, which include cutting back on spending, stocking up on items, and spending less on expenses. So there is an ongoing fear uh, that whatever I have in my pocket might last me the, little, the next while. That also impacted a lot of leisure businesses, a lot of travel, a lot of luxurious products, because those are usually the, the, the type of businesses that, or the type of spends that goes out of the window as soon as uh, my income um, get threatened. The other thing is that uh, older generations are slightly less concerned than younger generation and letting uh, it impact their shopping habits. So we still do have a little bit of a grip on the older generation, the money spenders. Uh, so it's slightly better than the millennials. And 24% of uh, boomers and 34% of Generation X said that they were letting the current event impact what item they purchase uh, and, and also nearly half the millennials have also changed their buying habits. Um, and, and the number one thing that we're seeing across the board, and I bet all of you on the phone call, same as me, change our grocery shopping habits, change our travel and commuting habits, change our spending habits, and almost uh, uh, if we everything, if we can do it digitally, we now do it digitally. 
uh, everything. Um, I no longer meet with clients, but we still, I'm still doing business. I'm still doing selling and, and consulting. Um, and a lot of people are within the same uh, business. Um, um, so a lot of companies will kind of reconsider how they run their workforce. Uh, are they doing it remotely or not? But the number one arcing answer that is really obvious to everyone uh, at this moment is that the number one goal of all businesses is to accelerate the digital marketing transformation. That is by far the most important thing any company that needs to do right now because your consumers are no longer getting referrals or asking friends or going to events and meeting or, or trade shows or getting mail. All of these things are being completely cut back and now is the time to have the smoothest and fastest way access to your consumers via their digital marketing, via their phone. The phone and, 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 and the way we, we've been talking about how important this phone digital marketing plan for the last 60 years, and now it's like the absolute number one uh, important thing. I was reading an article this morning, and I believe um, Google said in, by next year, they no longer are going to index your desktop website and they're only going to care about your mobile website. So even major companies like Google are completely disregarding what desktop experience users look like. We have more than 60, 65 of the entire uh, 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 online traffic sales and leads goes on mobile. And I will touch base uh, on this a little bit later. As easy and, and logical it sounds that we need to improve our digital marketing. It is hard. 43% uh, of small, medium businesses have no time. You're an amazing as a, an operator of a business or a technical person or a consultant, and you have no time. You're doing what you meant to be doing. You don't have time to learn and implement and do all of this stuff. Um, and it, 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 it's difficult. I will, not, I will not lie to you, and I'm not here to tell you that digital marketing is, is, is easy to be implemented. Um, and 47% of small and medium businesses have no experience. Again, it's the same thing. You're very amazing in what you do, but being a consultant or being an operator um, does not mean that you do have the necessary experience to do digital marketing. So those two main reasons are one of the main roadblocks for any company or any business that they don't have the resources, they don't have an internal digital marketing team, or they have one person that is doing so many hats, sales and digital marketing and social media and the whole nine years, it's very difficult to move that agenda forward. And even when companies move into digital marketing, the 62% of small businesses do not know whether their marketing plan works or not. Uh, when we um, acquire a new client, we do something uh, called onboarding call or a discovery call where we ask them what have been they been doing in the past and what worked and what didn't work, and almost the same story. Um, I, I get that visualization when the client's telling me their stories is that they have their marketing budget uh, thousands of dollars, they're holding it at hand, and they step to the balcony and just open their arms and let the dollars fall. Some fall into radio, some fall into print, some fall into digital marketing, some fall in here, some fall in there. And a lot of businesses are successful and growing, and, and that's why they want to invest more in marketing. But the, the, whatever works for them, they don't even know which dollar that brought them this business. They don't know which channel that generated this phone call. So they have no clear plan into which areas to continue investing in and which areas to completely stop. So this is another hurdle for companies to grow because the easiest and the most logical thing to do right now is to continue investing in the channels that are working for you and stop investing in channels that does not work for you. But without having the analytics, without having the data, we're just going to be estimating, and it might hurt more than it can benefit. So without further ado, let's talk about four ways to grow your business during COVID-19. Step number one, do not stand still and wait this out. This is 
one of the most dangerous things that I hear uh, a lot of companies say, let me wait this out. I don't want to make any massive moves, which is, does sound logical. You do not want to really risk it when the economy is in danger, but you are missing on a lot of opportunity. And this is a chance like no other. There's, I can't even remember in, in the life of me or even my parents that we, 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 we went through something like this. The, 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 the last similar thing was the Spanish flu in 1919, and we can even relate to that era of time. So this is a, a, a time to uh, uh, slow down and reflect on your business and see what has worked or not worked for you in the past. Maybe this is a good time to reinvent your business, your offers, your packages. This is a great time to do so because that flow in business might not happen again. And also, we need to look back before we move forward. So let's take this opportunity to look internal and take a deeper look into how to uh, reinvent your business and tackle those projects that have been on hold for a very long time. Some of these projects are like web redesign or rebranding or uh, uh, introducing a new service. Um, we're seriously considering having um, uh, 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 an office or not. Um, it's completely different. Like we've been operating from an office for the last eight years and been working great, but we have been working remotely for, for so long. So my company and my business partner are looking into, is it viable to actually have a, a, a remote uh, a working force and having a smaller office to, for meetings or presentations or something like that, which is a huge business decision for companies that really uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis in communications between the team to get the projects moving. So this is one of the areas that I never thought to be looking into, but now is the time to do that. And the uh, most important thing to me, and, and again, you can really agree or disagree with me, this is actually the time where you double down on your digital marketing transportation. Most, most businesses, I, we have so many clients that got, called us to pause, and we had a discussion with them. And there are even bigger and bigger uh, companies than, than my clients that have cut down their marketing spend, have cut down, have cut down, and everything actually has been uh, going down in terms of sales and marketing. Yes, it sounds bad, but this could be actually a really good opportunity because think about it. Uh, Google ads or Facebook ads or all of these marketing are auction based, right? So imagine you're going to a car auction. If there are less bidders, there are less people to compete on the same thing you want, then the cost of the item is actually going to go uh, 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 less. We used to generate leads for uh, 35 to $45 on Google Ads, depending on the type of services. We're generating leads for like $12 and $15, right? This is a number I couldn't have even dreamed of. I, we have doubled our marketing spend since the start of COVID. And I'm, I am in a little bit of different shoes than you are, but this is one of the things. Most of people who have made financial gains during the 2000, uh, 2008 financial meltdown were the people who doubled down. One of my favorite movies to watch is The Big Short. So I, I really recommend you to watch that movie uh, if you haven't already uh, did. So whatever you do, do not set this out. Do not stay uh, 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 fixed and say, I will wait this out. Let's see how this pan out because it might take longer than expected. Uh, hopefully it's a lot less than we expected, but do not sit on the sidelines during this time. Step number two, uh, if you do have a house and you do want to sell your house, before you start inviting people to come in and check it, you do have to fix it. You need to fix the doors and the windows and clean the carpet. If you want to build a high-rise building, you need to make sure that the foundation can outstand your plan. And a lot of times, the foundation of any business uh, online presence, unless you have an application or something like that, is your website. That is the main door of everything that you do. We ran a case study here. Um, any clients or any um, inquiry that come to Green Lotus, we offer 
uh, a free digital marketing uh, audit and a consultation. So we ran, I believe, since 2012, like more than five, 6,000 audits. And we did an, a, a case study about just the last thousand of them. And here's what we found. The average site performance across a thousand websites is 54%. If you're in high school, that will be a fail. And 439 websites score less than 30%. That is almost 40, more than 40% of websites we audited are, are like poor, really, really bad. 82% uh, of sites have technical issues, and that is logical. A lot of companies, when they build websites, um, they, they hire a team or whatever that is, and then as soon as they build the website, that's it. So they haven't updated it, they haven't maintained it, and just majority of older web design platforms do generate issues by time if you don't have a technical person uh, looking after them. 76% of websites do not rank on the first page of Google, and that's understandable if they were already rank on the first page of Google, they were not contacting us. But you can see that only a very limited number of people are actually gaining market share, and majority of small and medium businesses are completely out of the competition. 41% of sites were unsecured. I'm like, I can't believe this. We're in 2020. And Google have officially announced about like two years ago that site security is still an important ranking factor. And still, more than 40% of the sites we did an audit for were not secured. This is one of the worst results I have seen in, in, in this audit, that an average of 26% page speed on mobile. That means that the website takes more than eight seconds, five to eight seconds to load. There are some case studies that says we only have about three seconds for a consumer to uh, decide are they going to interested in contacting you or not. So you actually lost the consumer before they even saw your website. Think about the last time you were trying to load something on your mobile and it took three, four seconds and you will say, oh, it took forever. And you just went back and you just went somewhere else. Imagine that will happen to your website if it's not fast. 64% are not mobile friendly or have a very low user experience. Still, after talking about mobile experience for the last five years, there's still a big number of companies do not have mobile experience. And even if you do have like a run a WordPress or, or some of the most common um, site builders that they tell you that there are mobile responses, but even having a, a responsive mobile website does not mean that you have a good user experience on mobile. And the last thing is that uh, a lot of companies did bad SEO practices in the past, and they have toxic backlinks, and they have been penalized. So that kind of shows you the state of the foundation of most small businesses. I really hope that this case study is not true for you, and you're doing a lot better. But if, if not, uh, contact us, and we will do a free site audit uh, more detailed and more insights, and we'll give you also a free consultation uh, as well with it. Um, and here's why. This is what we found out. What are the main reasons for the low performance? And across the board, with the outdated site management solutions or outdated WordPress themes and plugins, uh, uh, clients designed their website three, four years ago. Nobody looks at it. The content management system like WordPress, our open source platform, and WordPress run its own updates. And if the update is not compatible with the theme, your website will break or generate an SSL, um, sorry, CSS errors, or so on and so forth. And a business owner really are not that technical to really know. For him, the website loads, and I click on the service page, it goes to the service page, but they're not aware that there is a whole can of worms behind that platform. So. Most common issue I see over and over again is the actual foundation, the content management system, the main engine that is responsible for your website, usually the main problem. Um, using CRMs that are not SEO friendly. Um, most of drag and drop website solutions are not SEO friendly. I'm not going to mention names, but um, think about it. If, if that website builder that you're getting for 5 or $10 and it's very easy uh, uh, to set up and use, 
what you gain in usability, you lose in search engine friendliness. So you're going to build this amazing uh, uh, billboard for only five, ten dollars a month. But guess what? It's on the side road. It's not even on the highway because it's not search engine friendly. We we had uh, a major financial company, um, and the website was one of on those uh, side builders. They switched from WordPress to uh, that side builder because it allowed their internal team to manage the website, and it did that for them. But it actually hurt their ranking quite a bit. And we actually had to switch them off because the main engine is not ready to do what they want them to do. Duplicated content. This is uh, very popular in the realtors or the financial advisors uh, where they get a pre-made website with duplicated content across the board. And slow sites due to low-cost shared hosting plans. So if you do pay for hosting anywhere between 10 to like 40 or $50 a month, you are on something called shared hosting plan. Shared hosting is uh, you have a hosting infrastructure that have seven or 8,000 websites on it. They all share the RAM. They all share the, the, the speeds and the resources. So if, if there's a one website that is really popular, it takes from all the other websites on it. So do not go cheap on hosting. And this is another thing. If you don't have the proper hosting solution, then again, uh, there's no reason for us to do SEO or to run a Google Ad campaign because it will take more than five seconds for someone to load your website, and then you will be spending your money, you will be wasting your money. So I won't even go there unless we actually fix the foundation and make sure it's actually proper. Outdated or black SEO uh, hats and practices, this is one of the main things that also impacted this. So we've been seeing this problem for more than 10 years. And a lot of the companies even I worked for before starting my own company had this problem. So uh, this is why last year we launched uh, our second product. Uh, we have another product called Green Lotus SEO Tools. This is the first Canadian SEO tool, and it's an award-winning platform. This is the second product we launched, and this is why I won the second Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, we're so proud of it. It actually overcome all of our expectations. We called it SMART because... It, the website actually changes behavior based on human interaction with it. So you can set up a personalization rule to say, if someone comes for the first time, show them an intro video. Someone come, come for the second time, show them uh, uh, um, an introductory offer. Or you can uh, A-B test uh, Google versus Facebook. Give people coming from Google a specific pro, uh, a promo code and the other way around and then see at the end of the day. The smart site can even detect the user's location, if you run a brick and mortar uh, 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 business, um, the, the, the website can uh, detect the location and say, hey, you're within five minute drive, come in for $10 off. So we've seen this actually have helped quite a bit uh, with our um, users, and it's built for Google first and, and for all. Um, the uh, smart sites are hosted on Amazon servers, and Amazon servers are something completely different than any server in the world. Any server in the world, let's say you're, you're, you're using uh, one of the biggest hosting companies in Arizona, and uh, if, you're web, you're, if you're a visitor in, in Arizona, the website will load fast, but if you're a visitor in New York, it will be loading slower. Amazon used something called content delivery uh, system, or uh, uh, CDN. So the, they have more than 400,000 servers around the world, when, and when someone visits your website, they're loading it from the closest server to them, and that's why smart websites load in a fraction of a second uh, on mobile. And the last thing, this is, as far as I know, the first website builder that is built for mobile devices first and then made responsive for desktop. All WordPress and most popular uh, website builders are built for uh, desktop and then made responsive for mobile. This is uh, why uh, 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 our clients are raving about the conversion rate, especially on mobile. And more than 40% of consumers uh, buy more from retailers who personalize their shopping experience. Uh, imagine how wonderful it is if a user comes back and you say, hey, welcome back. This is your second visit. Why don't you do this or why don't you do that? To recognize that they are loyal or, or, or return the visitor. They really love that. Um, and you can do all of that on smart sites with any, without any uh, coding experience. These are the three steps that you need to do on a smart site. 
in order to set up a personalization. I'm not going to uh, go through it. You can, guys can request a free demo or a consultation, but I just wanted to show you a, a, a brief screenshot that there's no coding whatsoever in order to achieve this. Uh, here are some uh, um, life examples. Uh, you can trigger a visitor clicking on a unique link from Facebook or LinkedIn to offer them a specific promo to measure their performance against something else. Or you can book an, an appointment, uh, a pop-up, if someone arrives at your website after the business is closed, instead of letting them wander and trying to call you and not leave a voice message, let the website tell them upfront, hey, sorry, we're closed for the day. Click here to schedule an appointment to talk with us tomorrow. Uh, it really helped, and we implemented this for a lot of clients and seen humongous success. This is one of the uh, smart sites that we designed for uh, a satellite and internet dealer uh, up here in Canada. And the one thing that I want to uh, get your attention to is that mobile experience, that right here, that simple feature, that menu here is what we call a sticky menu. It always stays on top no matter where you are in the website. And here is this mobile icon that allows users to get in touch with you within one click. Most websites take five to eight clicks to allow someone to contact you. It's so hard. You have to find the phone, you have to copy it, you have to exit the, the, the browser, you have to open your phone app, you have to paste it, the phone number, and then you have to call. Why are you making it so hard for someone to contact you? With a smart site, it's just one click, or you can implement the same thing on your website builder if you can. Just This is one uh, uh, tidbit that you can really take uh, from this presentation. Uh, here's some before and after uh, case studies uh, from that specific user. I do not want to go through the whole thing, but the most important number for me, before they switched to a smart site, their conversion rate was 3.5%. Now the conversion rate is more than 18%. That's five to eight fold what they used to do. And we don't have millions of dollars of budgets to advertise, so let's make sure that we squeeze every little conversion that we can. Step number three, after we fix the foundation, let's dominate the first page of Google. I'm not saying let's get on the first page of Google. I'm saying let's dominate. Let's get uh, on the first page of Google more than once. So you, these numbers you guys are already aware of, 91% of consumers use search engines to make buying decisions. 75% of people do not go to the second page. More than 43% of searches are local uh, 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 queries because people want to deal with people uh, uh, geographically close to them. And a lot of mobile, 50% of local mobile searches result in a store visit within one day. So be careful here. There's two criteria. It needs to be local and it needs to be mobile in order for that big number to appear. So you have actually more than seven chances to be on the first page of Google. Uh, we know that the advertising or the pay-per-click appears on the top, but you also have six other verticals that can allow you to appear on the first page of Google. We have so many clients that are twice and three times and some are four times appearing on the first page of Google. And the more real estate you take from that first page of Google, the more odds and chances you can actually dominate. And something new maybe for uh, uh, people that are not really aware of SEO, there's something called position zero. And this is... Uh, when uh, Google show a feature snippet. So a feature snippet is something that they show like this, a bigger format uh, with a rectangle and an image or highlighting. These are screenshots from some of our clients. And you can see there are multiple ways of showing feature snippets. And when it shows on mobile especially, it looks like the answer from God. It's taken the whole space. Uh, and it's very powerful if you are able to do that. So you can see a feature snippet on mobile is the entire space. I'm like, Google is telling you, like, this is it. This is the best answer. This is actually a client of ours that ships wine. So to really give you the, the quick snippet on how it works, how to choose the best platform for you, should you do SEO or you should do Google Ads, this is a very quick analysis of how both of them work. So SEO takes three to six months to see the results. It's very slow but steady. On the other hand, as soon as you launch a Google campaign, boom, you start getting traffic and you start getting sales. Uh, this is, uh, search engines do not charge you every time they send you a click, but here you pay per click. 
Uh, on the SEO side, let's say you did an SEO for a year or two years, and then you move from page whatever seven to page two or page one, and you stop doing SEO, you're not going to go back to page seven or eight. Your ranking is going to fluctuate because uh, your competitors are also optimizing, but you're not losing all of that effort. On the other hand, as soon as you stop doing your Google Ads, you're back where you are. The simplest way to explain this, this is SEO is like owning a car. A car is $24,000. You're going to pay $1,000 for the first two years, but the average life of a car is 10 years. So you're going to get another eight years without any more investment. But Google Ads is like leasing a car. As soon as you end your lease and return the car, you have no long-term value, but it serves a purpose and it got you where you need to go. So you really need to, uh, if you do have a little bit of excess of budget and you need the phone to ring and you need business and sales right away after you fix the foundation, make sure that we're not wasting this money off the window. You need to fix the foundation first and then you need to start an effective Google ad campaign. More than 91% of people start their searches online. And you can see here how people do the research online. So you can see um, uh, the retail is 56% of people start their searches on mobile. Lifestyle, 62%. Sports, food and beverages, 72%. On average, 61% of all traffic happen online come from mobile devices. So make sure when you run your Google ad campaign, you do have a different strategy just than your text normal ad copies. There's something very easy that you guys can do. It's called uh, uh, mobile ads only, where these type of ads only show on mobile and it allows you to be one click away. This is what the ad look like, and on mobile, it will show this icon for a call. As soon as they click on it, they will be directly contacting you, or if they do click on your landing page, make sure that your phone number is very visible and people can click on it and call you right away. The other thing is that uh, you really need to target mobile advertising. Like focus your search on a location. Uh, do not just do advertising across the US or across Canada. Narrow down your advertising and focus more on mobile ads. This is where the money is coming and this is where uh, people are doing business because when someone search on their mobile, there's usually a, sort of a sense of urgency and you do want that customer that wants to speak to a consultant, wants to get an answer for a question he has in his head right away. Uh, these are some of the technologies that we use uh, for our own clients and, and you can also use it as well. Uh, we use something called uh, smart bid management or machine learning bid management technology. Uh, same as the stock market, Apple stock on a Monday morning is $200, on a Friday evening is $180. It's the same stock, but you can get it cheaper. The machine learning kicks in after 30 days. We have a client campaign and optimize the account every half an hour. So our client campaigns are being optimized 48 times a day to get them the cheapest cost per click which will result in the cheapest cost per lead or the cheapest cost per sale. We do local mobile search targeting. We create a dedicated and creative campaigns only that target mobile users, and this is usually where we get 70 to 80% of the leads we generate to our clients. Make sure that you do not send, unless you, do any, um, unless you have an e-commerce, I do not recommend sending Google ad traffic to your website. Your website might not be good, might be confusing, the navigation or the user experience might not be good. Design a landing page, something very small, people can digest in three to five seconds, and usually that way you get your conversions. And we build our landing pages on the same platform I told you about the smart site and track the lead. Um, we, we did a case study that more than 70% of the leads that most of businesses do get is phones. So we use something called dynamic phone tracking. The regular phone tracking is you know how many calls came to your business, but dynamic phone tracking, you actually know what the keyword generated it and how much did it last and how much did we pay for it. And also personalization, uh, uh, this is something you can also use uh, from the smart site feature. Uh, these are some case studies. I don't want to really uh, go too much. I want to point out to the conversion rate. So this is 
the uh, uh, conversion for the same business when we run Google Ads campaign, the site overall is 18%, but the Google Ads campaign only is 22%. Uh, here's some case study for uh, uh, Remax um, Realtors. Here's another case study for another uh, uh, dealer. 15%, an industry average of conversion rate is 1% to 3%. So the fact that we have some clients converting at 13 and 18% is quite amazing. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. Step number four, it's time to build for the future. This slide is a little bit old. We're already in 2020. But basically, right now, 50% 50 of all searches happen on Google are via voice. And 41% of adults use voice search on a daily basis. There are actually a case study that 55% of households in the U.S. will have a smart speaker by 2022. 55%, 55%, that is a massive number. I think that's more than 100 million houses will have a smart activated device. Uh, this is a case study that compares all the most four popular smart activated speakers. And the solid green number is the number of questions that the device were able to answer, understand and answer. And the hashed one is the number of questions that the device were able to answer accurately. So you can see that Google Home is actually doing leaps uh, above all of the other competitors and because they have not just invented the technology. If you do have a Google Home, uh, it's basically a speaker, but it's connected to the same algorithm that Google has been uh, 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 working on for the last 10, 15 years. So that's why Google is very ahead of most of its competitors. And Google have released some of the most interesting numbers. 52% 52% of people uh, who own a voice-activated speaker say that they keep the device in common areas. I'm like, how amazing you can actually talk to your customers in their living room. Uh, 53% of people who own voice-activated uh, say that it feels natural to talk to them. Things that we could not even think about. Uh, another thing, 62% of people use it regularly and speak to like them to buy something. So if I search something on Google Home, more likely that I will be buying it. So a lot of those numbers, there's so many case studies uh, about it that you can actually see how people are using Google Homes. And if you do not have a Google Home, pass by Walmart in your way home uh, and get one, I think it's like $25 for the menu or something like that. Um, Make it your gift for Christmas to really understand how are the younger generation are using it. And to better understand what is Google actually saying, when you ask Google what is the best way to invest or what is the best hotels in this city or what is the best attraction in that city, to understand there was a case study that actually asked Google Home more than 5,000 questions. And 80% of the results that Google actually uh, announced is from feature snippets. Isn't that amazing, right? Because feature snippets are the type of results, again, that Google can understand in a very different format just than your regular title and copy. Um, So these are, again, some of the case studies. And I really uh, invite you to start asking your Google Home some questions to get to know that. Here are some case studies from our clients. So you see this. This is a feature snippet. This is how Google is actually saying uh, uh, how they pronounce these results. So the bad news is that the competition is about to get more fierce. So uh, if you search on Google uh, on mobile or desktop, you get 10 to 15 results with ads. But on, when you ask a Google Home, they usually give you one answer to a maximum of three. So the fight of 15 will become the fight for one. So it's going to get a lot worse. But the good news, if you do have a strong, successful SEO study, so strategy, you can actually Uh, gain traction and gain more visitors and users on um, Google Home. Here are some eight tips uh, that to optimize for uh, Google uh, Voice. Um, You can read them quickly on the screen. It's basically having a a phenomenal clean website, no technical errors, a high score of SEO, uh, very fast site speed, domain authority, all of that stuff you really need to get your website in top shape in order to rank on the the Google Voice when they say, what is the best attraction in the city? And then it saves uh, some text from your website. And um, I really thank you for taking the time to actually listen to this presentation. And we are more than happy to do 
uh, detailed audits and consultations for free for any business that needs some help or need a second opinion. Thank you so much for uh, listening in. Great, thank you, Bassem. Um, for